Texas showing absolutely zero flinch yesterday on the 40 acres. Final score, Texas 40, Kansas 14. Now Kansas, rank Kansas now. Put some respect on Kansas's name. We're gonna talk about Texas a whole lot right now in this segment, but I wanna make sure we get this out there. Kansas without Jalen Daniels, but that's still a well-coached football team, a ranked football team, and if Texas hadn't brought their A game, could have been interesting. Could have been one of those games that you're watching in the third quarter, fourth quarter, and you look at the ticker and you say, whoa, Kansas is hanging around with, with Texas. Well, hey, Kansas is, Kansas is up on Texas, but even so, man, Texas, no flinch, zero flinch. Got it done. Got it done in convincing fashion. Looking forward to Red River. We're going to talk about it all right now, but really quickly, Texas fans, Texas faithful, met a lot of y'all in Tuscaloosa as you celebrated a big-time dub over the Crimson Tide. Appreciate y'all being a part of this. Appreciate y'all being locked in and being subscribed. If you haven't already, double check for me that you've hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, welcome to the party. We're glad to have you here. College football, only college football. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Jody Paquel to 110% lock in to the program on Instagram and on Twitter. So, for a game like this for Texas, this was the ultimate take your eye off, uh, excuse me, this was the ultimate take your eye off the ball game for Texas. It was. Because you had the logo in front of you, right? That you've been trained to believe now for years, just isn't a football school, isn't any good at football. You got the Kansas Jayhawks, right? Oh, by the way, too, no Jalen Daniels. And that happened, I believe, in a pretty abrupt fashion. Kansas' best player, their quarterback, dual threat quarterback, provides a lot of issues for you all over the field, wasn't playing. Also, next week, you got Oklahoma in Red River. Biggest game of your season to this point, outside of the win over Alabama. So the biggest, I guess, hurdle left in front of you with Oklahoma. Huge test, rivalry test. Easy to look ahead, easy to peek ahead and say, Okay, let's get ready for that one. Let's, let's give that one our attention and not take Kansas seriously. Also, you already beat Bama. So it's easy to kind of think like, hey, we, uh, we should just kind of show up, collect this dub, and get out of town, right? Like going to the bank. Hey, I'd like to make a withdrawal, one dub. Thank you, we're getting out of here. But like, we understand. If Texas had rolled in that way and not started the way that they did, things could have gotten dicey. Things could have gotten interesting for Texas, but they did not allow it. They did not flinch. They were aggressive. They started fast. It was 10 to 0. And again, going back to being aggressive, they went for it on fourth down early, a fourth and three, and they went for it. And I love it because that's what they would have done against Bama. That's what they would do against Oklahoma. They treated Kansas no differently than any other opponent. That's what great teams do. Face this opponent. Doesn't matter. We go out there. We handle our business. You do what you want to do. That's fine. We're going to bring our A game. Doesn't matter. We'll see what happens at the end of those four quarters. And so I love that. And I think the, the whole thing with Jalen Daniels for Kansas, yes, he, he definitely makes that a better effort for Kansas, right? Like I think we just can all agree that he makes Kansas a better football team when he's available for them playing quarterback. That triple option attack, it's very difficult in terms of how it tests your defense. It causes you to be extremely disciplined in your assignments because if you're not assignment sound, someone's going to bust a big run. That's what the triple option is predicated off of. It happened yesterday for Texas, kind of a fluky way with Kansas getting kind of that bounce on the turf fumble pitch kind of thing they scored on. But what I want to say is with no Jalen Daniels in this football game, yes, he makes them better, but there I think is still a level of difficulty involved with playing against a quarterback that you didn't prepare for. And Jason Bean... Yes, similar skill set in some ways, being a dual threat quarterback, but a different player. And that could have presented some challenges for Texas, but even so, found a way, had two plays that got away from them, had two, I guess, break plays that the defense had issues with. But regardless, still, Texas held their water, handled business, got out of Texas, got out of the 40 acres, rather, got out of a, a home situation with the win, which you're obviously encouraged by if you're Texas. But here's the more impressive thing to me. Like we alluded to at the top of this, I was really impressed by the psyche of Texas, not just the way they handled this one, but the way they handled it within the game. Like the game flow presented a lot of opportunities for Texas to have some tightrope moments. And when I say tightrope moment, when you're a trapeze artist, I would imagine never been a trapeze artist, but I have tremendous respect for the profession and for everyone that decides to walk on a wire. Love it. When you're up there though, I would imagine it is really easy to be walking and have a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I am so high off the ground 
with very little margin for error, this is crazy. Kind of start to panic, have that, oh my gosh, start breathing heavy, start you know, hyperventilating, the anxiety creeps in. I didn't see that from text yesterday. Even in those tightrope potential moments where it's 13-7 at half, you throw an interception when you're driving. Tightrope moment potential, didn't see it from them. 20 to 14 in the third quarter, Kansas kind of hanging around. You missed a field goal. Hey, what's going on? What's going on with Texas? I didn't see any flinch from them. No tightrope moment anxiety from them. I saw them just continue to stick to the script, chop away, and handle business. And that's what Steve Sarkeesian said in his post-game press conference. He told those guys, hey, stick to the plan. And this team stuck to the plan, to the tune of a tremendous second half. They outscored them 27-7. to What was the story all year last year with Texas? Hey, a lot of talent. Quinn Ewers think he could eventually be good, but they cannot put two halves of football together to save their life put a really strong half of football together yesterday in the second half. That's, that's not a mark of old Texas. That is, again, the new Texas under Steve Sarkeesian. you got to be encouraged by that because that's not something that will just show itself in this game. That'll be something that you see from Texas going forward. That's an identity. That's a DNA. That's who you are. You can't fake it. You cannot fake it. Also, extremely balanced. Extremely balanced in the sense that they threw for over 300. They ran for over 300. But I want to really focus on that second part. We should not breeze past the fact that Texas ran for over 300 yards yesterday. From what I could see, Texas at a certain point in that game was just content to lean on their offensive line. And we saw them up close in Tuscaloosa. Up front, Texas is built like an SEC offensive line. So much made about them going to the SEC next year. Are they ready? Like, that's kind of a fun talking point for a lot of people right now in the college football landscape. I'm like, hey, let's just focus on the Big 12 for Texas and enjoy this season. But, you know, it is what it is. They're built like an SEC offensive line. And they leaned on them to the tune of 336 yards rushing. Jonathan Brooks, 218 yards, 10.4 yards a carry. Y'all, you get 10.4 yards to carry as a running back. I promise you really good things are happening. Your team's probably winning a football game would be my guess. And that was the thing for Texas. They could just lean on the offensive line and lean on their physicality. Again, not a mark of old Texas. That's new Texas. You could tell they took pride in being physical and being able to just kind of take over that game with those big boys up front. That was, that was their trademark yesterday. And we saw it. We saw it in a very real way. Adonai Mitchell... Speaking to the pass game, provides a whole new element to them. He's physical. I think he's, if you can even say this, kind of a change of pace wide receiver from what Xavier Worthy offers. He had 10 catches, 141 yards. And Steve Sarkeesian alluded to this in, in the postgame press conference as well. He demands attention to where you just stretch a defense thin. And this is the way that I'll say it. I think you stretch a defense thin when it comes to resources. Like you cannot account appropriately for the run game Texas is bringing. Okay, if they have that offensive line moving the way they want to move. Xavier Worthy, who for a lot of people's money is one of the best receivers in the country, if not the best outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you add into the mix Jatavian Sanders. Then you add, add into the mix Adonai Mitchell. Like somebody's going to get fed, man. Somebody at some point is going to get fed, especially with how cool, calm, and collected Quinn Ewers is these days and the way that he's running this offense. We say this probably once a Sunday, if not multiple times a week. Teams take on the persona of their leadership. Leadership includes your head coach and your quarterback. Quinn Ewers, I think, was a very big part of why you saw zero flinch from that team yesterday. Because he wasn't flinching. He wasn't worried. He wasn't having that anxiety on the tightrope kind of moment. He was ready for the moment. They handled it. They leaned on their offensive line. Made the plays in the past game where they were. Defense with those couple of plays, found a way to get back to neutral, and game was what it was. Texas took over, and the final score was 40-14. to 14. So now, the challenge for Texas is, you are back to the spotlight. And you want the spotlight. It's one of the reasons why you go to a place like Texas, is to play in games like this against Oklahoma and Red River. But I'm curious now, because there's going to be a lot of emotion in this game. There's going to be a lot of buzz around this game. College Game Day announced they're going to be at this game. Not territory that Texas is unfamiliar with, but they went from last time they were in this spot, week two, on the road, playing Bama. And at this point in time, like Texas is kind of that little engine that could. A lot of people are making the trendy pick to beat Bama, but even still, it's kind of like a little bit of a, of a reach. I don't know if reach is the right word, but like you're kind of 
not necessarily going with the crowd if you're picking Texas over Bama. The expectation wasn't Texas to beat Bama based on what Vegas said. Then you slay the dragon in Tuscaloosa. Now you walk into this spot and the burden of proof is on you. Hey, Brent Venables in his second year. You throttled them last year in Red River. Like, what's this going to look like? If Texas can keep the main thing the main thing, stick to their internal standard, and kind of block out the hype and not buy into their own hype, I think it's going to make for a tremendous game, and they'll play to their level. We'll talk about Oklahoma here during the week. We'll predict this game on Tuesday, actually, so make sure to dial it in. But I think that's the challenge for them now. Kind of switching roles from being the underdog to now having the expectation, I would imagine, for a lot of people, for them to do what they did last year to this Oklahoma team and roll past them. I think Oklahoma's better. We'll talk about that game when it gets here in Prediction Tuesday, rather, during our live show. But that's the test now. That is the test. Can you hit the reset button, regardless of how you're viewed on the outside looking in, and play your style and your brand of football every single week? I cannot wait to watch it. You better believe that we will be dialed in for this game. You better believe that we will be talking about this game all week long. So again, make sure you're subscribed. We are live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Prediction Tuesday, giving you our pick for Texas and OU. So make sure you're locked in. But again, Texas victorious yesterday at the crib, 40 to 14 over the Jayhawks. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep this party going. We will see y'all next time. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.